Hello, welcome back. It's Freddie in the Shed. I hope you're well. And welcome to the second video on this model hit and miss engine that I bought from Banggood in China. On this video, I want to go into a little bit more detail about how this engine runs because I think it's fascinating that it has no throttle, it just has a governor which controls the speed. So I'm going to go into that in just one second. There is a, a third video. If you might be interested, when I first got the model, I did have a little bit of trouble in getting this model to start. And I will leave a link to the third video in the description. It's on my sister channel, Fred in the Shed 2, and there'll be a pop-up at the end. But anyway, let me just explain a little bit how this engine works, because I think it's absolutely... Well, this engine, why is it called that? It's a bit, well, unlike a standard four-stroke petrol engine that fires every time that it gets to the compression stroke and the spark plug fires, this, this hit and miss engine doesn't. It will typically only fire on every five to six cycles, and the rest of the time it's idling. I know it sounds a little bit odd, but it relies on the inertia there of these massive um, flywheels. And if you can imagine one of these full-sized, huge, great, heavy flywheels, and it allows, it relies on that inertia to keep the engine going at a consistent speed whilst it's just coasting. And then it fires again, and then it coasts again. It's, an, it's a fascinating system. I, I've had a lot of um, time to look into it whilst I've been waiting for this model to arrive. Let me just show, go around the model and I'll explain a little bit how it works, at least to my knowledge, which of course I'm a guy in a shed, you know me, but at least let's see if I can uh, get it across to you. The difference between a standard four-stroke engine, what we're used to, and this, I'll see if I can go through it. So there's your spark plug, there's the cylinder head, there's the carburetor with a little needle valve to control the mixture, and then this little spring here that's not connected, it's not actuated to anything, that's your intake valve. Now normally on a normal engine you would have a camshaft or a push rod and uh, that would then open and close the valve but this works purely on a vacuum. So it only works as the cylinder draws back it creates a vacuum and then it opens the inlet valve, lets the fuel in. The engine then fires via the spark plug as a conventional engine and you get a, you get a power stroke. If the engine fired on every stroke, because there's no butterfly valve in the carburetor, it would just run faster, faster and faster until it ripped itself apart. So you've got a governor, and it's very similar to a steam engine. You've got these two little brass balls on this shaft here using centrifugal force. So what happens, as this, as this engine increases in speed, these balls will separate, they'll become further apart. And then this little lever here, I think I can show it, what it does, it will activate, it will move forward, that goes up like that, and then it will lock, and it will hold the exhaust valve open. So once you've got the exhaust valve open, then you can have no compression, and because the inlet valve underneath the spark plug, you can't see it now, but because that relies on vacuum, there is no vacuum, because the exhaust valve is held open, that means there is no fuel allowed into the cylinder, and yeah, the engine just coasts. And why that, whilst that governor holds open that exhaust valve, the engine just freewheels, it just coasts, it doesn't use any fuel. And because it's got these very large heavy flywheels, and you can imagine what these would be like in a full size machine, that keeps the engine going at a consistent speed. You've got a lot of energy stored in these massive cast iron flywheels. When the engine starts to slow down, it starts to lose power. The weights then contract in on the centrifugal uh, governor there. This little device also slides backwards and once again it lets the exhaust, exhaust valve close and then there's vacuum, it will suck in fuel via the inlet uh, valve there and the engine will fire once again and the whole thing repeats. And that's why it's called hit and miss, because when, when, if I get it running a little bit later, you'll sort of hear it free will, chomp, 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 poomph, chomp, 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 poomph, chomp, 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 poomph. It sounds like, if you're a normal engine, it sounds like one of the pistons or the single piston is missing, but in, in this case, it's the other way around. It's actually firing, but only firing on every five or six cycles. And of course, if you was to attach a load onto this, which you would do if it was a real machine, if it was running a mill or a thrashing machine or a generator or something, 
Of course, by attaching a load, the machine would then run slower, the weights would not spin out so much, and it would fire more regularly. Eventually, I suppose, if you had a real heavy load on it, it would be firing on every stroke. But because it's freewheeling quite a lot, every, say, five cycles, it's quite economical compared to a normal petrol engine on normal four stroke which of course will fire on its every compression stroke. I think when these originally were invented so the 1890s certainly turn of the 19th century 1910 things like that if you had a farm or a factory I mean there was no electricity that we take for granted today with generators you can't just flick on a switch get your machinery running if I say a mill anything really that required uh, mechanical machinery and I think one of these engines would have been a lot s simpler and easier to get started in the mornings and say having a conventional steam engine where you'd have to fill up the uh, fill up the firebox and build up the steam and everything else I think this would have been much much quicker it um, it does require water it has got a hopper at the top here I think you can just about make it out so it's, it's got enough like a water hopper it is water cooled that goes round the cylinder and that keeps the cylinder cool but of course it's not circulated by a pump I think maybe perhaps on some of the later models uh, were circulated by a pump um, these engines I say they, they went up just before the second world war they were popular to about the 1930s some of the down downsides of it is, is obviously it's quite complicated with all of this mechanism here for the governor and the valves and also it's an open crank design if, if you look at the back there's your piston there going and your, and your crankshaft and uh, yeah it's not enclosed um, it's a drip feed oil system so whilst this engine was running you'd have to have a machine operator and he would have to go around just with an oil can and imagine a grease gun on these big journal bearings here on the main shaft and also you've got the crankshaft of course so yeah it, it's it's a complete wasted wasted oil system you would just have to keep putting uh, oil on all the working parts so it did require a little bit of maintenance and yeah eventually they were replaced just by the more conventional four stroke petrol engines that had a enclosed crankshaft they had an oil feed system like a modern car engine um, again if you had this to say if you imagine if you had this in a mill or something all of this gearing system and you get a lot of dust I imagine you'd get a lot of wear so there would have been breakdowns um, repairs needed and yeah eventually the four cylinder petrol engine it was just that much more reliable it's also lighter because obviously you need these to keep this thing running at a consistent speed you need big 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 heavy flywheels so I mean one of these engines even a small one would have been quite heavy I would have thought that say a typical six horsepower hit and miss engine I imagine it probably weighed 400 to 500 kilograms with these great big flywheels and of course it's a slow running machine as well um, they, they typically only run up to a maximum of about 250 rpm probably average about 150 rpm once they're on load uh, again a four stroke petrol engine well what would that run out a big one probably I don't know probably 500 to 750 rpm something like that so you you would have got more power out of a conventional four-stroke petrol engine let's talk about fuel now it's a gasoline engine petrol a lot of people run theirs on lighter fuel but you can buy those little cans it's a bit expensive i did some research people recommended this coleman's fuel which is like a high grade petrol used in camping lights things like that i also add a little bit of two stroke oil because there is no lubrication on the cylinder itself and just a few little drops and I'll mix that up and there it, there it is there the model itself it, there's no oil lubrication so you have like a steam engine model you have to oil it every time um, car oil is fine for that normally a 5w40 I'm using some Castrol Magnatec as I had some in the garage but all of the moving parts have to be oiled there are little oil ways down to some of the bearing journals which is which is quite good and all of those need to be oiled before you can run the model okay that's everything oiled next is filling the fuel tank I use a syringe because it's just a bit easier really now it will run for about 10 minutes on a fuel a full tank there is a water jacket here that 
you should really feel if you're doing a short run you can get away with not running it with any coolant but it's not really advisable so yeah like I say just use a syringe I usually feel this pretty much to it overfills there we go just gonna pull that off of the carburetor there we go that's it and that's got rid of that air bubble and that's it really we switch on the ignition and then we're good to go almost forgot the coolant there so just using tap water distilled water would be better there we go just filled up the reservoir right start it now it does come with a starting cord a bit like a lawnmower or maybe a, a leaf blower or something like that um, generally fine once it's running you can start it by hand but for the first run we are going to need to use the cord just going to switch on the ignition three double a batteries of course does the ignition coil like a bit of a buzz box ignition coil there. Right, here we go, let's give it a start. It wanted to go, it kicked a little bit there. guys
Well, there you go. I, I think it's a wonderful model. Um, smells nice too. <laughs> it's very good. That's smell of petrol and oil. Not quite, doesn't smell quite as nice as a steam engine.